Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor of God. And today I have a message for you from the Lord that has two scriptures to accompany it. The first is Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 through 28. In the King James Version Bible it reads, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not uh, as the scribes. That was through verse 29. The second scripture is in the book of Acts, and it's Acts 27. And I want to give a backdrop to this before I read it so that you understand what is happening. And it's regarding the Apostle Paul. And Paul has been a prisoner of the Roman Empire for starting a riot in the temple area of Jerusalem. After taken by secret to Caesarea and accused by the high priest before Felix, the Roman governor. At his second trial, two years later, he appealed to Caesar and Festus, the Roman governor of Judea, invited King Agrippa and his wife Bernice to listen to Paul to come up with political charges before shipping him to Rome. Paul took advantage of this opportunity to preach his faith in Jesus of Nazareth. Festus, Agrippa, and Bernice rejected Paul's invitation to have faith in Jesus as the Messiah, so they decided to ship him 2,000 miles away to Rome. And back then, sea vessels were very uncomfortable and very dangerous to travel by. In the ancient times, there were no uh, sextants or compasses. They had to navigate by the stars, by the sun, and by the land. Then what happened was there was a great storm. It was a winter storm. A nor'easter took place. And Paul tells everyone on the ship that he knows that from an angel that everyone is going to survive. And although everyone survives, the ship will be destroyed. After 14 days without eating, Paul took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all, and he broke it and began to eat, and the passengers ate and were encouraged. Okay, so now here's the scripture. It's Acts 27, verses 7 through 44 in the King James Version Bible. It reads, And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Nidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmoni, and hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven 
was not commodious to winter in the more part advised to depart thence also if by any means they might attain to Finis and there to winter which is an haven of crete and lieth toward the southwest and northwest and when the south wind blew softly supposing that they had obtained their purpose loosing thence they sailed close by crete but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euroclidon, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive, and running, running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we, being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this, arm, this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island but when the fourteenth night was come as we were driven up and down in adria about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found it twenty fathoms and when they had gone a little further they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms then fearing lest we should have fallen upon the rocks they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers except these abide in the ship ye cannot be saved then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off and while the day was Coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they all took some meat. And we were in all in the ship two hundred threescore and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoist up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, 
kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land and the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land now for the message given from the lord god on june the 14th 2022 it's a very short message it's just a sentence the hearts in the storm a perfect storm a sign of judgment so i believe that this is a prelude to judgment coming very soon and i was led to this scripture acts 27 about the storm and how Paul was able to preach to those on the boat and give them hope that they weren't going to die. And he told them from the angel that they were all going to live and they did make it onto land. And I believe it is a metaphor as to what is about to happen that even though these judgments are going to start taking place, and I believe they're already starting, this is my opinion, but as long as you believe on the Lord your God, that you are going to be safe, and he's going to take good care of you, and there's going to be no harm that's going to come to you, but you must be covered in Jesus' blood. And the scriptures both point that out, that you must know him in Matthew. It talks about it says, Hear that many will say to me in the day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So you must repent and believe wholeheartedly on your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be covered in his blood. And further down in this scripture, in Matthew 7, verse 24, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So you must be wise and believe on your lord and savior jesus christ and he will protect you from this perfect storm that's going to take place which i believe represents the coming judgments that are already beginning let me read that message one more time it's just one quick sentence it says the hearts in the storm, a perfect storm, a sign of judgment. So I believe what this sentence means is your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are, is looking at everyone's hearts to determine whether or not they believe on him and they've repented of their sins and they're covered in his blood. And if you are, then you are going to be protected from this storm ahead. So this is the word for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and definitely share it to all your social media. If you like the content on the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do pray for all of my viewers and subscribers daily for Jesus' blood protection 
over your life from any harm from the enemy. And if you have any questions or prayer requests, please send them off to my email address, which is listed down below in the description box. So please take heed. Now is the time to come to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins, be covered in his blood, and be protected during these storms ahead. And may God bless you.